Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18 beta 2 has been out since earlier this week. And there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18 beta 2 is out what's new video with features and updates. I've also been using it full time on my 15 pro max and my iPad pro. We'll talk about the overall experience and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 29,000 votes and 321 comments. I've read every single comment to determine what the overall experience is like. But first, let's talk about a little bit of Apple news, then we'll talk about features and then the experience and some of your comments about what you had to say about it a little bit later. Now, the first thing is Apple Vision Pro has been out in the United States for a little while, but it's now launching in other countries. It's now available in mainland China, Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. You can now also pre-order it in Australia, France, Canada, the UK, and Germany. So if you've been wanting to get your hands on one, they're now available for pre-order in those countries and out in others. Let me know what you think of Vision Pro in the comments below. I've been using it for a little while. It's okay, but it does need some more software, some changes, some features, and Vision OS 2.0 is definitely much better than earlier versions. Now, Apple Pay had some issues this week in Hungary in particular, where they faced an issue where bank cards of some were actually being charged by Apple's own app store. Rafiasin Bank, hopefully I'm saying that properly, has said that they've been working with Apple to resolve the issue as it seems to be related specifically to their card and it was causing some issues. I saw some people say they were charged up to $1,500 on Mac Rumors, where they actually had to work with the bank to get that reversed. So let me know if you've run into this issue. It doesn't seem to be happening elsewhere, just with that specific bank within Hungary, but hopefully it doesn't happen elsewhere. Tap to pay on iPhone is also now available in Germany as of this past Tuesday. And what I mean by that is tap to pay from one iPhone to another. So if you're a business, you can do that now in Germany. Now, Apple some time ago actually released a self-diagnostic mode for iPhone, but it only seemed to work in the United States and Canada. Apple has now started to roll that out in Europe in 32 different countries, and I actually have a separate video on how to do this that I recorded on YouTube some time ago. It should be the exact same steps, but be sure to check it out, as you can see it here, where you have diagnostics and repair, and you can go through and check different things such as your eSIM, Face ID, and much more. I'll link to this in the description along with the actual article from Apple. So let me know if you've tried that out and if it's working for you. With iOS 18 beta 2, Apple has added a bunch of new features. One of them has to do with Apple Wallet. If we go into the Apple Wallet and then we go back and add a new card, if you go to add a debit or credit card, they've changed the way you do this. Tap continue. You'll see a new animation where it says hold near card, hold iPhone near the chip on the card to add it to wallet. So if I bring a card nearby, you'll see here, We'll go ahead and bring it here. It actually gives haptic feedback and then this network's not supported so I can't use this card with it, but I could scan the card with the camera, enter it manually, and then just enter it into Apple Pay that way if it's supported. Apple finally did it and added RCS to iOS 18. So now that that's actually on iOS 18, if your carrier supports it, there's actually a way to tell this. If we go into settings, then we go to general, and then we go to about within the about screen, you'll see that we have carrier here. My current carrier is T-Mobile. If we tap on it, it actually tells us that it supports RCS. Now your carrier may not support this in the United States just yet, but the three major carriers support this so far, T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. Outside of that, I'm sure Apple will add support later on, but they did it and finally added RCS support. Some people were asking me to show if this could actually send videos as well with RCS. So I thought I'd share that. So if I bring in my Pixel 8a, I showed this in a previous video, bring that in here. If we go into, maybe we'll go into photos. Here's a video I had earlier where I recorded it with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, comparing it to the S24 Ultra. We'll go ahead and share this to messages. Now we'll go ahead and send it. It does say on the pixel that we have an RCS chat or messaging session going, and we'll go back to messages and see if it's sent. So it looks like it's sending right now. It shows RCS on the bottom of the iPhone, and it's showing over here that we have RCS on the Pixel. So let's give it a moment just to send. It completed, and it should be in full quality. So if we tap play, looks like it's the same quality here on both devices. Definitely great to see that, as it was much, much worse with SMS before. So you can send those high-quality photos and videos, and then see when someone is chatting back and forth. Just type hi and you'll see the little bubbles pop up here and it works the other way around too.
So you'll see that on both devices. So I have a full video explaining what RCS does. Definitely something great that I never thought we'd see on iOS and Apple has finally done it and brought it to iOS 18. This should be out to the public in September, so people should be able to get it then. One other thing I wanted to mention is it does look like we have RCS support on iPad as well. If I bring the iPad over here on this iPad, this actually has a SIM card in it or an eSIM. And if I go into messages, you'll see it actually says RCS. And if I type hi here, send it, we'll give it just a moment. It should go through. If I type hello, Let's just send it like that. It doesn't seem to work fully on the iPad with the different bubbles and everything else. It doesn't seem to show up as fast, but that may be because it's an early version of it. So we'll have to wait until Apple maybe pushes out beta three or beta four until it's fully implemented on iPad. But it does seem like it at least works with RCS in some way. If we go into notes on the iPad, someone had actually asked in a previous video if we're maybe using the attachment and using record audio and we're using the new live transcription option while recording audio, can you actually continue to take notes? And the answer is yes. You swipe down and just type a note while it's still recording and you have the pause or record button here to start or resume. So you can just stop it, pause it, and then resume it and it will continue recording. Tap on it, you go right back in and you'll see it's recording with live transcription in real time. So a really great feature should definitely help with those using notes. Now files has a new option that was just recently found in beta two and within my files, maybe in my recents or somewhere else within iCloud, if I press and hold, you'll see, I have a new option to keep downloaded. I can permanently keep it on the device. So it no longer has to download over and over press and hold. And then we can uncheck that and the little cloud goes away. So again, press and hold there. You'll see a little cloud and it lets you know that it's permanently on the device. Now, as far as releases this week, we did get a few different releases. There was an AirPods firmware update for pretty much all of the most modern AirPods, along with Beats Fit Pro and Power Beats Pro, bringing them to version 6F8 on the AirPods Pro 2, both USB-C and Lightning, Beats Fit Pro and Power Beats Pro on 6F8, and all of the other AirPods from AirPods 2, 3, AirPods Pro, and AirPods Max on 6A326. This was basically due to a security issue. I mentioned this in a previous video, and you can see that on Apple's security website. And on Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, tap on the top one here, you'll see the latest firmware update for AirPods. If we scroll down, this actually was an issue with Bluetooth. When your headphones are seeking a connection request to one of your previously paired devices, an attacker in Bluetooth range might be able to spoof the intended source device and gain access to your headphones. To fix it, an authentication issue was addressed with improved state management. So that's something they resolved. They should update on their own, but if they haven't, I would recommend just connecting them to your iPhone, making sure they're charged over 50%. Maybe listen to about 30 seconds of music or a podcast, then close them back into the case, put them next to your iPhone, and then just lock the iPhone and walk away. They typically update within about 15 minutes. Apple also released a new Safari technology preview this week, along with all of the other betas we had. If we go into download Safari technology preview, you'll see it's version 197 and it was released on June 19th. So we have that technology preview for both macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma. If you want to check out the latest features. Now, iOS 18 public beta one could be a couple weeks off based on last year where it seemed to release about after iOS 17 beta three. So we should still be a couple weeks off. That's what I would expect based on what we've had in the past. And based on that time frame, maybe a couple weeks from now, maybe the second week of July or so. So once we get beta three, we could get beta three probably that same week or so with the public beta later in the week. So that seems more likely. We could also get an iOS 17.5.2. Apple still has yet to address the alarm clock bug and screen time bugs. Those still are sort of in these current updates. It doesn't seem like the alarm clock bug is there in iOS 18, but screen time doesn't work for many people. Also, we could see iOS 17.6 beta two this coming week, maybe around July 2nd or 3rd, and then see what's in that and get close to a final release. So it looks like we're ramping up closer to iOS 17.6. So we may not have a 17.5.2. They may just fix this with 17.6. And then of course, we'll have the iOS 18 public release sometime in mid September, just before the iPhone 16 launch. That's typically what Apple does every year. So we're only a couple months away and quite a few betas left, maybe seven or eight total for iOS 18. 
Now, as far as the overall experience, well, iOS 17.6 beta one is still great. According to most people running it, many people say it's fixed a lot of issues, has good battery life, and especially for an early beta seems to be doing pretty well. However, iOS 18 beta two is better in some ways than beta one, but far worse in others. The main issue is more of a visual bug issue or crashes, but people are still having issues. Now voiceover is actually working better for some people, but the action rotor is not working for some others. Emoji reactions seem to be working properly for most people. I actually never had any issues with that. So if you wanted to have an emoji reaction or just add something else, if we go in here, maybe add an emoji here, it seems to be working fine. If we want to drag it on here, we can do that. It seems to work just fine. So those emoji reactions are definitely working in beta two. Also the overall device just seems to be working better in some ways for some people, but other people have a really poor experience. The good news is connectivity seems to be pretty much fixed, at least for me in this particular update. Like I've mentioned before, I have T-Mobile seems to be fine with no issues. I've had zero connectivity issues this week, and that's much better than we've had in previous updates. No cellular drops or anything like that. Much, much better. Now, the main issue many people are having with this update is pretty much visual where sometimes the icons just sort of disappear for whatever reason it's working right now. But if we press and hold, then we go to edit and customize. Maybe we change to light mode. You'll see a bunch of them just disappeared. If we swipe over here, we'll go back. Now a bunch of my icons just disappeared and then they reappeared. So this is definitely a bug. I'm sure Apple's aware of it and definitely is something you don't want released to the public. Now, this is something if you just switch to large, it seems to fix it, go back to small and it seems to fix that issue. So if you are having the issue, go back in here, maybe adjust it a little bit, switch it to dark or light mode or whatever you'd like, and make sure you go to large, go back to small. It seems to fix it even without rebooting it. It's just a little bit of a pain. Now, other issues include it sort of just randomly heating up while most of the time that's not an issue. Sometimes it will randomly heat up and maybe process something in the background. The wallpaper dimming bug is definitely there and worse in this update than many of the others. You can kind of see it right there where it desaturates. It definitely is more pronounced on blue colors this time around for some reason. And then some people said when taking photos and then you're trying to view it, particularly from the lock screen. So if we go into the camera, maybe snap a photo here, go in, it's not working for a lot of people or just photos in general is crashing. I haven't experienced that, but a lot of people have mentioned it. The other thing, again, as I mentioned before is screen time, where if you're using screen time, it definitely seems to be an issue for some people. I'm tapping on screen time. It's doing nothing. I can't scroll. You'll see it locked up the phone. If I close out settings, go back in, it's a blank screen. Give it a moment. The phone is now heating up randomly. Like a process is stuck. This is definitely an odd issue that seems to be coming back and around for many people. Again, if I try to go into screen time, it does it every time. So it's definitely an issue. A lot of people have faced and still persist. They need to fix this. Now beta three should probably refine a lot in iOS 18. Typically by beta three, they're getting it ready for the public beta release. So I hope it gets much better with the next beta, but it is an early beta. There's bound to be some odd bugs and overall camera seems to be about the same. I really haven't noticed any differences whatsoever from beta one to beta two taking images. I haven't had the crashing bug I just mentioned, but taking a photo or video or anything else, just seems to be fine for me, but not everyone is having that experience. The overall quality looks the same. I've even seen some complaints of banding in some of the photos, which is typical, something typically something you would get in maybe eight bit photos, but you'll see it was a little bit laggy there. So as overall performance is concerned, it seems to be pretty good most of the time, but there's occasional lag and stutter throughout. So we'll go into music, swipe home. It's fine. If we turn this down, We'll press play, swipe home, and sometimes it's a little buggy. There we go. It goes into the dynamic island and there's just some odd bugs here and there, but in general, it's definitely usable, but still has some issues. When it comes to the heat of the device, it's much less in general, but right now, because of that settings bug, it's starting to heat up a bit. So it really goes back and forth. If it's just working properly, it seems to be nice and cool compared to what we had before. So let's take a quick look at the thermal camera and you'll see on iOS 18 beta two, we're at about 35 to 36 degrees Celsius on iOS 17.5.1 we're still sitting around 31 degrees Celsius. Again, on iOS 18 beta two, that's about 96 to 96.5 degrees Fahrenheit compared to, well, 
88 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit on the device that's just sitting here idle. So overall, it's definitely getting warm in certain situations when you have different applications crash, but using it throughout the day doesn't seem to be much of an issue for me. As far as the overall battery health and battery life, if we go ahead and take a look at the settings, go into battery. If we go to battery health, you'll see we have 95% maximum capacity at 229 cycles. Here's the information from Coconut Battery, just to give you a little bit more in-depth information. That's a Mac app that you have to install outside the App Store. But as far as the battery goes, this is pretty normal. Apple says the 15 series phones are good for a thousand cycles before they get down to 80% in ideal conditions. So about about every 250 cycles would be about 5% typically. If we go back, take a look at the last 10 days. Today, I actually, or yesterday, I had five hours and two minutes of screen active time, four hours and 27 minutes of screen idle time. It's actually gotten better for me since beta one, but randomly some days it's just better than others. The day before I had three hours and 25 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 30 minutes of screen idle time and used about 60% of my battery. So it's improving from what we had before, but it's still not back to what it was when it was new. As far as the overall benchmarks, well, those are a little bit odd. They seem to be pretty low in general. So if we go back, go to the history here, you'll see the one I ran, I actually ran two just before this video. I had 2,793 for single core, 6,859 for multi-core. If we take a look at what we had before, it improved over the previous run, and it's about the same as the other day, but it's just not back to where it was with 17.5.1. So it definitely should improve a little bit as we continue through iOS 18. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18 beta two, well, if you have beta one, I would definitely upgrade to this so you can test it out and then report any bugs and feedback. However, if you're not on iOS 18 yet, I would at least for, wait until iOS 18 public beta one. If you're on iOS 17.6 beta one, that's okay. But if you're trying to solve bugs, never install an early beta as it will create more issues for you. But if you have a secondary device, maybe an extra iPad or an old device, then try it out on that and see what it's like. Now, as far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Isaac man, 1870 said beta two is way better than beta one on my iPhone 13 pro max. They fixed the notification bug. I wish I had RCS though. I'm on cricket wireless. So hopefully not too long now. Chris Palmer, 4983 said, I have been using iOS 17.5.1 on my iPhone 15 pro battery life has been good overall. I usually get all day battery life, but that is with light to moderate use. Overall, I haven't experienced any major bugs. I do have a few minor bugs. Ralph Miller, III9957 said, Beta 2 has been very buggy. Stacked widgets randomly disappear when swiped. Most widgets stay in light mode, even though my phone is in dark mode while the app itself is correctly in dark mode. After waking the phone, the bottom of the lock screen sometimes says that I have 99 notifications. There are others, but those are the ones that stuck out. Shri Raz Shri Kumar, and hopefully I said that properly, the battery life has definitely improved with this beta. I'm getting better or almost the same as I had with my iPhone 15 Pro on iOS 17.5.1. Hanzala Fayaz says, currently using the public version of iOS 17.6 on my iPhone 15 Pro. It seems really stable and good to use, no bugs or issues so far. We'll be updating to iOS 18 public beta 1 when it comes out in early July. Javur said, for me, battery life on iOS 18 beta 2 is same, if not better, than iOS 17 running on iPhone 15 Pro. JR Castanaza says, beta 2 is the first beta try for iOS 18, surprisingly super happy with how well it's performing. Buggy, yes, but not what I expected at all. I have no issues with small bugs here and there. So that's everything with iOS 18 beta 2. Lots of new features, lots of changes and refinements, but it still needs a little bit of work. Let me know if you've found any additional features I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.